Hi everyone, how are we doing today? Welcome to another webinar of CIDC webinar series. And the objective of this webinar series is to share knowledge, share information, and create awareness about topics not only related to dentistry, but also topics of social significance and social importance and those topics affecting our society. And we have uh, chosen this particular topic today, which is very relevant in terms of the COVID situation that the country is facing. And uh, we have invited a very enthusiastic and a young speaker for today's talk. And uh, before I pass the stage to Dr. Lahari to introduce the speaker, a few gentle reminders that uh, number one is you can share your comments and your questions in the Facebook chat box and we will read them and we'll try to address the questions as many as we can. And number two is we will be providing e-certificates to all the participants and the only condition is that uh, we will be uh, requesting your feedback on the webinar. We will be sharing a Google form link in the chat box, Facebook chat box, and you can click on that, fill up that feedback form, and then we can issue you a e certificate for your attendance. So, without uh, any delay, um, just a short introduction for today's topic it's on mental issues. And mental issues is termed as a silent killer because those who are the victim are not aware themselves if they are the victims. And that is why it silently eats away your health in terms of mental health and therefore it is very important for us to address this issue and you must have realized that even in the pandemic there have been a lot of issues of uh, domestic violence that is uh, directly related to the mental health. So with this uh, interesting topic uh, I request uh, Dr. Lari to please introduce our speaker Dr. Lari. Yes, a uh, very good morning, Dr. Fawaz. Uh, <clears throat> we have with us here uh, today, Dr. Arvinder Singh HS, and it's my pleasure to introduce him. He is a, a very dynamic uh, speaker with many accolades to his credit. After his MBBS from Ames University, he had gone on to pursue MSc Health Research from uh, Royal College of Surgeons Ireland and also is an occupational health doctor as well as a diploma holder in football medicine. He is currently working at the Clinical Research Center Hospital Sungai Bulo and is simultaneously pursuing his PhD in epidemiology and statistics at the National University of Malaysia, UKM. Uh, it is my pleasure, uh, Dr. Arvinder, uh, the stage is yours. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Lahiri. Thank you, Dr. Fawaz. Appreciate um, the invitation by Penang International Dental College. And um, I will be sharing a topic which I feel is rather important. So a lot of people say, hey, you got a, a master's in health research, occupational health, diploma in football medicine, shockwave certificate. What the hell are you talking about, mental health? Well, um, my PhD actually uh, revolves around mental health, especially in adolescents and teenagers. Um, especially from the athletic group. And um, as I was going along with this, I realized how important mental health is actually is um, and also um, how it has affected us, not only now, maybe in the past, but definitely in the future. So um, I have made it a point to make uh, people aware, especially our pro uh, fellow professionals of doctors. When I say doctors here, um, I'm talking about uh, medical doctors. I'm talking about dentists. And, you know, actually this talk is for everyone because mental health affects anyone, anytime, anyone, anytime. So the outline of my presentation is actually very simple. Um, I have a, a timeline for the past, present and future. Now, I unfortunately, I try to look for the tweet which I sent out in March 2020, but, uh, you know, Twitter only keeps... Uh, tweets until June, uh, because I think I tweeted a bit too much, which also is another reminder to me. So basically, in March 2020, I mentioned that the issue now we are having is COVID-19. For the past, the present is going to be COVID-19 and the new norms. 
And in the future, we will deal with COVID-19 with a new strain and also dengue. Of course, uh, many people thought that I was not accurate in saying about dengue. Why was it a, is he having a mental disorder by talking about dengue during the COVID-19 situation? But I actually told them that because of the amount of staying at home and the amount of disposables we are using, you know, disposable, everything has gone disposable because of our current COVID-19 and the fear of it, that rubbish will actually build up. And because there was actually very little rubbish collection during the this particular COVID-19 period, we found that rubbish will go up and dengue will definitely occur. And now we are seeing that pandemic. So based on that of the past, present, and future, my outline for today is basically the past we know what is about depression and that is where my talk will basically be facing on. Of course, we will talk about a little bit about anxiety, but most of it will be on depression because that is the biggest problem now we are facing globally. And what is the current depression by the COVID-19 situation in Malaysia and maybe in the world? And in the future, due to measures of the present because of COVID-19 and our norms which have changed and also because of the higher usage of online activities. You see, um, half a year ago or this time last year, I would probably be in front of all of y'all speaking to your life in physical presence. But now it's all gone online because we know that this is probably what our new norm will be. And with that, mental health will actually take an effect on based on our new norms, which I will touch a little later on. So basically, what do we know? I don't like to go all medical on y'all. I'm going to give y'all simple definitions. It's, um, it's I think, understandable uh, by almost anyone. So it's basically mental health is a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential. I think this is very, very important. So her own potential because that also affects the treatment. We can cope with the normal stresses of life can work productively and fruitfully. But we are also able to make a contribution to our own community. Now, how does all of this affect our health status in a whole? Or in a whole? How does it affect health per se? Well, WHO has actually put a definition that health is a state of a complete, phys of a complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease. doesn't mean that if you have a disease, you are not, not healthy. No, it is a complete physical, mental, and social well-being. So even a person with a disease under well-control can still be termed healthy, as long as they are physically, mentally, and, and their social well-being status are in good shape. I was just having a bit of trouble. So the term now is mental health and mental illness. This is a terminology which is, uh, uh, I think, stuck most of the time. So let me just share with you what these two terms actually mean. Mental health basically means being well emotionally, psychologically, and the social well being how WHO has, termed, has, has defined it. Now, mental illness, is it affects how we think, feel, and act. And it also helps determine how we handle stress related to others. And Now, basically, in other words, mental health is the physiology. Everybody has mental health. You have mental health. I have mental health. It's mental health status of good or bad. Now, when you have a bad mental health status, you may be having an illness. This is the physiology, and this is the pathology. Okay, sure. I'm sorry, I think I was not, in. I apologize. All right, I apologize for that. So basically, mental health and mental illness. Now, these are terminologies which have been 
um, which 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 have been interchangeable lately, uh, which is not true. Basically, what mental health is, it is basically emotional, physiological, and social well-being status. And mental issues affect how we think, feel, and act, and it also helps determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and make choices. Basically, mental health is the physiology. Everybody has mental health. You have mental health. I have mental health. And mental illness is the pathology of it. When we have poor mental health status, there may be a mental illness which is present. So it is important at every stage of life. Some of the common mental health issues are stated here. And I feel bad for our brain who actually has to undergo all of this. As you can see, it's taking a whacking and tumbling down the stairs because there are things like depression, anxiety disorders, which can actually be broken down into PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, panic disorders, obsessive compulsive disorders, eating disorders, sleep disorders. Stress, bipolar, and skin are all some of the common mental health issues. You don't have to worry about the terminology. I would just like to focus on depression. And the reason we put depression at the top is because that is what is affecting our uh, community most. So what, health, what affects our mental health? Basically, there are a few things. Biological factors such as genes or brain chemistry. If you understand that, uh, some people say that, oh, when I'm stressed, I end up eating chocolates or I end up drinking coffee or I do some happy things. This is because it actually creates it joint it it it, uh, it uh, produces endorphins or even serotonin uh, that actually help with your happiness. So uh, when when these are not done or uh, when you don't make yourself happy or when a person is depressed or even having other mental health disorders, the brain chemistry goes wrong. But basically, for depression. We are talking about um, endorphins uh, and also uh, serotonin. Now, uh, just a quick thing. Why does the mother actually bond better with the child than the father? It's because when the and why do they encourage breastfeeding? Because when the breastfeed when breastfeeding happens, basically there is a release of this enzyme called oxytocin um, that actually helps with the expression of breast milk, and that itself is a happiness enzyme. So for those mothers who are, they notice that those mothers who do not breastfeed much, they end up with some amount of depression because the oxytocin release or postpartum depression happens because of poor oxytocin release. Life experiences such as trauma or abuse, uh, I will go into that a little later on, uh, which you will see some famous people who have undergone that and how it has affected them. And some family history of mental health problems. So as you can see here, I like this diagram, which is a, it's a fantastic diagram. Um, it actually shows uh, the risk factors for suicide, but I think it can be applied to many other um, uh, mental health issues. Other than previous uh, suicide attempts, history of substance abuse is actually a predisposing factor to many of uh, mental health issues. Physical disability or illnesses has been shown now to have much uh, mental health uh, issues because of uh, physical disabilities and illnesses, having relationship problems, having access to harmful means. Um, people who have access to certain chemicals, drugs, they are also at very high risk. And of course, when you have uh, a friend or a family member who you have lost uh, due to death or even suicide, now they are also um, uh, susceptible to any mental health disorders our mental mental health mental illnesses and anybody who's exposed to mental health conditions even psychiatrists a history of mental health uh, conditions and exposed to a lot of things like bullying uh, behavior or even uh, uh, discrimination or um how shall i put it um uh, being being outcasted especially with online issues uh, these days they are also susceptible to mental health disorders. But let's take a look at uh, loss of a family, friend, or member. Now, uh, my examples will be based on that. And I get a lot of patients who come to me and uh, ask, uh, tell me, uh, doctor, I'm having depression. I'm like, okay, no problem. Um, I will have to take a full history. What happened? Oh, I just lost a loved one. You know, it can be a 
spouse, it can be a, a, a person who they were in a relationship with, or um, even uh, family members. So I said, okay, after clocking a full history, I said, okay, uh, your issue is you are actually having grief. Yeah, yeah, I'm having depression. Uh, no, you are actually having grief. Yeah, yeah, I'm having depression. So there is a very fine line which everybody keeps forgetting about depression and grief. So when I tell my patients you're actually having grief, not depression, this is how they look like. Like, okay, so what's the difference? So basically, depression is when you actually have low mood, poor appetite, and loss for the pleasure to do things for more than two weeks, for most of the two weeks and maybe more. Grief is basically painful feelings that comes in wave. It is basically pulsatile. You have it and then you don't, you have it and then you don't. Intermixed with positive memories of the deceased. All right. And then depression, normally they have feelings of worthlessness and self-loathing. Uh, they feel sorry for themselves. They feel worthless. But the people with grief, it does not affect their self-esteem. They're still happy with who they are, but they are just upset with the loss. Now, that is grief. Why is it important to diagnose these two correctly? Or uh, why is it important to know the difference between these two? Is because distinguish them between them can help people get the help, support, or treatment they need. For example, grief is basically, um, most of the grief treatment is actually non-pharmacological where you don't have to treat them with many drugs. You may just, uh, may need to help them with some sleep uh, to tell them to, 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 to sleep better at night, uh, certain medications to help with that. And, and more of social support and maybe just counseling. That's what we do with grief. Now, depression may be all of that, plus you may need chronic medication. So there is a very... That although there's a fine line between depression and grief, but the treatment may definitely differ. I like this particular mental health handbook, uh, which uh, I have a QR code there. Oh, I sorry, I forgot to mention throughout my talk, I will be showing a lot of QR codes. You can actually uh, print screen, save it, and then later you can actually go and look at the entire piece if you would like to. So some of the myths which we have is depression will usually resolve spontaneously in two to three months. The fact is depression is persistent and may take up to two years for spontaneous recovery, which brings me to the point of why we need to diagnose it early. So getting help early, uh, getting support and treatment early actually makes it better. Now, it may be a chronic uh, uh, term of medications which they will be on, but they have better quality of life. And another thing is myth. The myth is mental disorders have no effect on physical health which is absolutely wrong because when a person has mental disorder, it actually is the risk of getting ill from other diseases or worsening of your diseases. Now, let's take a, a brief example. Hypertension. If the patient is having uh, anxiety and they get anxious most of the time with their hypertension, even with medications, their hypertension will move up and forth. It will be very erratic. The reason being because it is mixed with emotions and you will find that their physical health or their current health conditions will move up and down. Diabetes, for example, when a person is upset, they have the flight or flight syndrome, which will cause cortisol re release, and that itself will increase their uh, will increase the rate of hyperglycemia, or hyperglycemia will become uh, more common in them. Their sugars will go out of control, especially becoming higher, even though they are on medications. Now, it's very interesting to talk about myths and facts especially for mental health. So let's look at a few myths. I don't think of myself as a myth buster, but uh, here goes some of the things which are actually myths. Now, a family member already has mental health issues. I am spared. This is absolutely wrong. You may be the person with a mental health issue and the other people are celebrating because they don't have mental health issues. It is wrong. It doesn't mean that a generation has been skipped a generation has been lost that can cause mental health issues. Basically, it can happen over and over again among first generation, the same generation or future generations as well. This is also something very common. Shaman, shaman on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Most of the time, people with mental health disorders feel like there is a paranormal, uh, it is a paranormal incident, especially where you have schizophrenia, bipolar disorders, where they start acting like different people at different times, or schizophrenia, where they actually start 
uh, talking to people, especially those people who may be dead or alive. So they said, oh, this must be a doing of uh, a spiritual doing. But actually, if you look at the uh, movie, A Beautiful Mind, which was acted by Russell Crowe, he actually witnessed a person who was non-existent. He could touch, feel, hear them. But at the same time, they were not existent. So think about it. If a person starts looking and uh, seeing someone who is dead, for example, it does not mean that they have been possessed or they are actually having paranormal issues. It may be that they are just having a mental disorder or mental illness. But most commonly, people think that doctors and other professionals do not sustain mental health issues. Well, I'm here to tell you that these are myths. All of them are myths. And we will go into detail with them. So basically, who are the people who are affected? So it's quite simple. Uh, Change for cause uh, um, is actually one uh, organization which deals with mental health. And you can, as you can see, mental health affects everyone, no matter the age. One in five adults experience a mental health issue and one in 10 youths experience depression. Now, our world mental health statistics have shown that WHO, uh, WHO has actually reported that 10 to 20% of adults and children have experienced experience mental health issues. What is even more worrying, especially now our country, the issues in our country, is that 50% of mental health begins by the age of 14. Imagine a teenager at the age of 14, 50% of them who have mental health issues report that they had symptoms by the age of 14, at the age of 14. 75% by mid-twenties, the people with mental health issues, 75% already have symptoms by, the mid, by their mid-twenties. And what is even more worrying is 300 million people in the world suffer from depression. And unfortunately and sadly, 800,000 of them end up with suicide. What is even more worrying? The 15 to 29-year-old age groups the second leading cause of death is actually depression and suicide. Actually, suicide from depression, which is very, very worrying. So now you're wondering. I still haven't answered your question. Is it everyone? As you can see, this person here, I don't know how many of you all will know her, is Britney Spears. And she herself have actually under, has undergone depression in the past. But let me share with you some people over here. Now, we have many celebrities. And a, politi- and a politician over here. Can you tell me who does not have a mental health issue? Okay, I will go through one by one. This is Elton John, who is a famous singer. He actually has bulimia nervosa. It's an eating disorder where he had actually put on weight. He actually felt bad about it. He tends to eat a lot. He tends to eat a lot. And then he decides to throw it out. There is a there is a there is a incident of purging it out, either uh, through the either through through the inner canal route or via vomiting. He has a mental disorder. Mariah Carey, many of y'all don't know, she actually has a, a bipolar disorder where she can be hyper one day and one day at very low moods, and she has already self declared. Maroon Five, Adam Levine. He actually has a condition called ADHD, Attention Deficiency Hyperactive Disorder, where he can't really focus and pay attention. And he had this issue since he was in school. Now, remember, 50% of them developed by the age of 14. Sean Mendes, he has anxiety. Taylor Swift, he has, uh, she has anxiety as well. Remember this guy from Titanic or Inception? A Wolf of Wall Street, Leonardo DiCaprio, well, he has obsessive compulsive disorder. Very interesting. I read about him. He actually has to move in and out of, um, of, of doorways or walkways. And when he walks on the sidewalk in public, he has to jump on puddle stains or chewing gum stains, which are left on the ground for some reason or another. Hey, good looking guy, still with a mental health disorder. It can affect anyone. David Beckham. Now, everybody will be saying, hey, David Beckham is an athlete. Lah. How can he have any mental health disorders? 
trust me he also has obsessive compulsive disorder when he goes into a hotel room he must take all the magazines arrange them accordingly some people say or he has also declared once or twice alphabetically and keep them in the drawer amazing right lady gaga well it's actually a sad story she actually has post traumatic stress disorder with depression reason being uh, she was molested and raped as a child and that has affected her till now so as you can see some of her songs may actually sound violent and that is because of perhaps because of a ptsd you guys know this guy ryan reynolds who acted as blackpool uh, blackpool deadpool blackpool is the football team deadpool do you remember him he has an anxiety disorder especially when when they were shooting deadpool he actually found out that he had anxiety disorder that he could not sleep for certain days so in fact they actually felt that some of his acting was actually very very good because it caused some amount of neurotic symptoms within him which was actually quite sad when i read about it melanie c one of the spice girls also has an anxiety disorder so as you can see the only odd one out here without a mental health disorder or shall i say an undiagnosed mental health disorder is donald trump which we are not known it could change later on in future let's look at this few celebrities here jk rowling harry potter the harry potter uh, lady beyonce knows the famous uh, singer wife of jay z miley cyrus justin bieber ellen degeneres dwayne the rock johnson selena gomez haley berry jim carrey brad pitt jennifer aniston sri devi lady diana deepika padukone and angelina jolie what do these guys all have in common yes they all have one point in their life suffered from depression you can be a popular star childhood stars you can be a famous singer you can be a famous actor actress you can be a famous comedian famous actor famous singer famous actors royalty no disrespect to anyone but even royalty famous actors or a very fit athlete depression can affect anyone what about the mental health issues in malaysia well everybody is telling okay you have talked about a lot about uh, uh, foreigners what about malaysians well let me give you some data from malaysia especially from our national Mo health and morbidity survey 2019 2.3% of adults in malaysia have been known to have depression from the nhms 2019 this is worrying and remember how i told you that 50% of those people with depression or with mental health issues already have shown symptoms by the age of 14 Now this is a hidden epidemic in Malaysia. Seven point nine percent of children aged five to fifteen already have mental health problems. Now this is in twenty nineteen. Forty two point nine percent of them have poor interaction with their peers. Fifteen point nine percent have conduct problems or, or conduction problems. They can't conduct themselves well. Eight point three percent of them had emotional problems, and two point three percent of them had hyperactivity disorders like Adam Levine concentration disorders. looking at our increasing uh, uh, you know uh, expectancy of life in malaysia we have mental health issues which is 10.7% in 1996 and it has grown to 29.2% in 2015 it is a ever growing problem i won't say that is a growing problem maybe it is becoming uh, it's become such a situation where is being we are much more aware of it and people are getting help so that is why we are detecting it more but with our as i was saying earlier with our increasing uh, um uh, expectancy of life in malaysia which is 70 odd now for male and female which is about 75 74 for Mala uh, males and females we currently see we currently see 2.4% already with lifetime depression that means they have depression for their life life span and the current depression people who are having current depression in this 2019 survey was 1.8% now with the increasing expectancy of life 
this 1.8% may shift over here to lifetime depression. So we have to be prepared and we have to recognize that mental health issues is going to be a thing of the future. Let's look at this particular table, morbidity rate for tracer conditions in 2016. All right, this was the table which I got in 2016. Can I please ask you to pay attention to the mental health issues here in this last column? Now, this was done by according to states. As, as you can see, the prevalence of adult mental health statuses, people with uh, mental health issues were marked in red. So as you can see from these red dots, People from Kelantan, Sabah, and Sarawak were actually having mental health issues, which was above national average statuses where they were having problems. So, so a lot of people say that, hey, these people, you know, are having issues. Uh, uh, they, they're having mental health issues. Could be due to uh, improper facilities or improper uh, income, poor income. Actually, no, because if you look even further, Slango and KL also had issues. So I think the barrier or the stigma of telling that it is involved, uh, it involves only non-professionals or people with high income group, actually it may be a myth altogether. Who are these two people? Now the left is Diane Trisha, who is a singer in Malaysia, and Alicia Arin, who is also the Asian uh, Next Top Model, one of the contestants in the Asian Next Top Model. What are the similarities between these two people? Both have publicly declared that there are mental health issues which they had to uh, fight. Uh, uh, Diana, Diana has, Diane has also uh, uh, sung songs uh, about depression and mental health issues. And Alicia Arin has actually come out and mentioned that she had anxiety and depression um, before in the past. And unlike how other people from other countries have actually come up in big numbers, it is probably still a stigma in Malaysia. So we are seeing celebrities coming up, but we need more celebrities, more people to start talking about mental health issues so that the public know that, hey, you know what? It's a common issue. It's just like having a flu or a cough and flu. All right. It just is, it is a common thing and it can affect anyone. A lot of people talk about doctors and mental health issues that, hey, you know, a lot of people say, hey, you're a doctor. Lah. No, you know, you, you are, you're protected protected from mental health issues? No. Look at this particular paper done by uh, Claire, Claire Ger Gerada uh, in the UK, uh, where they looked at doctors, suicide and mental illnesses, which was published in 2018. So they looked at 3,500 doctors that presented from 2018 to 2017. And from those people who presented, the 3,500 who presented, 80% had mental health problems. Most of them, depression, anxiety, stress, and post-traumatic stress disorder. 15% actually suffered. Now, this is in the UK. Their uh, lifestyle, their, their, their uh, way of life may be slightly different. But 15% of them suffered from alcohol, drug misuse, and maybe mixed personality disorders, bipolar disorders, physical health problems affecting their mental health. Remember, hypertension and diabetes can be affected by your mental health as well. And a small number of them with undiagnosed schizophrenia and or psychosis. 21 patients from this 3,500 died. Why? Due to suicide. And most of them were men compared. Six times of that, there were six times more men than women. The average death rate was 44 years old and the range of it was from 30 to 65. Of course, it is a very small sample of 21. That is why they have given you the range and also the average age. And from early on in train, you know, the people who actually suffered were people who were near retirement and trainees, those housemen or those uh, FY1s for you like for dentists who just came up. Who are they? General practitioners, medical uh, physicians, surgeons, anesthesia doctors, dental people, dental officers, dental doctors of all specialities, psychiatrists, ophthalmologists, and e, uh, uh, emergency, ED, ED, uh, emergency department physicians. Now, one in five adults in the UK have thought about suicide and one in 15 have attempted. And you know what? 
doctors and healthcare professionals were two to five times more than the rate in the general population. Boring. I'm not trying to diss doctors and saying that, you know, we are more prone to mental health, but I'm just trying to say that anyone can have mental health issues. Where are we at the moment? And it is not me if I don't talk about mental health during the COVID-19 era. So we have known about the past definitions where, are, uh, where we were. Now, where are we at this moment with mental health issues? So when the coronavirus newly came out, doctors were all, oh my God, another coronavirus to happen. And not only did Fauci had to deal with Donald Trump's issue, this is how we all felt when the public knew about coronavirus because some of them actually thought that we were talking about the Lager Corona Extra, like Luis Suarez here, which was sad. But having looked at what we, we faced in the past, we have something bigger which we are going to face. As you can see, Italy is coming out of their COVID-19 situation and it's already reported in the Malay Mail uh, lately that survivors suffered from psychiatric disorders at a psychiatric level, repercussions at a psychiatric level, what? Post-traumatic stress disorder, societal problems. A lot of them were facing anxiety. A lot of them were facing stress. A lot of them were facing depression. Why? Because of their isolations, they were stigmatized. That person is having COVID. If you notice just now, when I talked about all the celebrities, I had a small column at the side with all the disorders, but I never actually labeled ADHD to this person, I mean, uh, where I put the words on that particular photo because I feel that is stigmatization. Even when I spoke about it, I felt it was stigmatization, but I had to tell you who were the people who were suffering so that you know that anybody can, affect, uh, can be affected by mental health disorders. So basically, a lot of them were stigmatized in Italy. They had depression, they had anxiety, they had stress, and because of all the new norms and all the way they were treated, these people had repercussions at a psychiatric level. You can screenshot and look at the full article here, which I put here on the QR code. It is not me if I don't show this graph. I have to show this graph. This is a own, my own graph, which I've actually collected the data from Malaysia and Singapore based on the daily census, and I have put it up. I apologize. This is a bit outdated. It is from about, uh, what, four days ago and two days ago. So as you can see, our infectivity rate of all the active cases in Malaysia had peaked during the MCO, and now it has gone down. Now, the moment we reach social function of more than 250, it has gone up. Now, what does this have to do, the infectivity rate have to do with our um, uh, uh, current uh, situation of mental health? I believe personally that this line which is going up here and here, these are COVID-19 patients. I believe that the mental health issues surpasses this line in this manner for both Malaysia and Singapore. Because remember, those people who have COVID are, are those people, those people who have COVID have been diagnosed to have COVID. They have, as you have seen from the previous slide, mental health issues. Now, other people, those who do not have COVID are also facing mental health issues, anxiety, stress, worried whether they are going to get. Why? Number of cases in Malaysia is 9,063. Of course, it has gone up over the last few days. Number of tests in Malaysia has, I mean, we can't exceed what Singapore has done, but the number of active cases keep going up and our infectivity is 1 to 1.38. In other words, every one person infects another 1.38 uh, people or in other words, 10 people infect 14. That is why our numbers are going up. And Singapore, one person infects 1.35 or 10 people infects 14 people as well. But with this infection rate that keeps going up, the anxiety levels keep going up. Now, even with the addition of dengue and chikungunya, which we are facing, that has even gone up because everybody is now having anxiety up to certain levels. I've been getting patients who come in, who can't sleep, who can't uh, think about anything else, have early form of depression, early form of stress, anxiety, some amount of obsessive compulsiveness also because of this current situation. And the next target who I think which will happen very soon will be in Perlis. If you look at this over the last couple of days, Perlis has seen a rise in cases. As you can see, a small state actually has infectious numbers that go up quite fast because the area of res residence is actually smaller. 
the way i have done this is i have removed all the land covered in forest only the resided areas and the population and i have not been wrong about perlis nagri sambilan and malacca and singapore why the reason being is these people stay very close and they get covid 19 now with the rise of number in cases i also foresee that the number in psychiatric the psychiatric uh, men, people with mental health issues or psychiatric issues in these states will go up now when i say that i'm not only talking about new cases i'm also talking about existing patients who may have worsening of their symptoms i have been talking about this since may i've al already written to the press couple of times and this is one of it mental health get help before it's too late because knowing that the number of covid cases were going up and how i was seeing person at a personal level the number of mental health issues that were going up i actually put out a, a, a letter to the press asking them to please uh, asking general public to please look after their mental health and covid 19 has a profound mental health follow how do we know we actually already studied in the us and this was somewhere in april and we have no and we know that the covid 19 pandemic has caused people to have depression anxiety stress and most importantly is what we are seeing right now is a higher increase of substance abuse people lost their jobs people lost income so they had more depression anxiety and stress and how they were dealing with it and which they were dealing with it wrongly was they ended up going on substance abuse i have put the qr codes here in case you would like to screenshot and maybe look at it a little later and sure enough in april 20 on the 21st of april people have already started talking about the implications of covid-19 for mental health issues and substance abuse i am personally seeing people who are coming with a uh, people who have been uh, cured or stopped from their from their substance abuse for, for example uh, uh, alcoholism smoking they have started back and even have been, maybe become worse substance abuse smoking of uh, uh, drugs illegal uh, illicit drugs people who have people who have been um, um pe people who have been cured or already off their particular issues are coming back with issues not only issues but worse off issues so this is something very 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 um, which 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 we are concerned of now i would like to talk about this particular lady who is dr Nur, uh, rosina alin khan so she is the shadow cabinet minister pretty lady uh, from the uk who is the shadow cabinet minister for the ministry of health they have a mental health ministry in the uk now she has come up in the past and mentioned that suicide among healthcare workforce is rising and the nhf staff needs access to mental health services says the labor department so during the mental, uh, covid 19 situation not only the patients have mental health issues even professionals especially doctors nurses allied health people were having issues only doctors no practicing lawyers dentists those people who were caring for uh, people with mental illnesses and chronic diseases they all had issues and they were said that the male doctors are 40 percent more likely to die from suicide than non physicians and um from that you will have that if you have a stressful job your career can negatively impact your mental health nine professions stand out veterinarians emergency medical technicians construction workers child workers doctors nurses restaurant workers humanitarian workers and lawyers all had mental health issues child workers especially these days i'm seeing because of their new sops it is not easy to deal with a child at their child care center because these people uh, had to deal with children who may not understand what the sop guidelines are so they are actually having more issues so where were we in the past for general health physical health we were having the never mind la attitude you know for hand hygiene mask disinfecting materials and social distancing but for mental health issues depression anxiety we still had it covid 19 am i going to get it will i suffer so little known did i already get it will it come to my country state district housing area neighborhood my neighbor and as you can notice i've cancelled out social distancing now with physical distancing why 
is because people thought that social distancing, oh, we have to stay away. And this actually happened in the US a lot. They felt that social distancing is basically connect, dis disconnecting from everyone. Disconnecting yourself with the public, disconnecting yourself with your family and friends, it became an issue. So they thought that it should they should be termed as physical distancing where you have to keep one meter apart. Why? Because people had mental health issues. They were becoming anxious. They were becoming obsessive, uh, having obsession and compulsion disorders. So now where are we? We are at, oh my God, this is serious. Maybe I should comply. You know, depression again has kicked in. Staying at home infected with COVID-19. Is our loved one infected? How am I going to get supplies, especially for those states which have gone back into lockdown? Fear of being infected. Fear of already being infected. Substance abuse. As you know, even our, um, I think uh, there was a, uh, our YouTube sensation lately of this Indian couple, Subhu and Pavitra, there was also a report of substance abuse which actually led to a lot of um, unwanted publicity on their part. So where will we be in future? Again, we are having mental health disorders of how will the new norm affect us, supplies, meeting people again, masking, children, parents, grandparents, will there be transmission, especially when children go back to school, the fear of being infected, fear of already being infected, have I had it, will we go into a lockdown again, which some states have seen, and will I have a mental disorder because of this? All of this is actually affecting our mental health subconsciously. General physical health, yes, we have contact dermatitis, use of scrubs. Why? Because of certain people. I always say it is better to scrub more than not. But some people have a reoccurrence of their obsessive compulsive disorders. Now we know the surgical mask masking is compulsory. Please do not use N95. I would like to take this opportunity to tell people not to use N95. Leave that for our medical health professionals. We don't want to look like mortal combatants. So again, can we buy disinfectants one meter or two? These are all the things that are affecting our physical health. But little do we know that is actually affecting our mental health as well. So what can we do? What can the community do? Basically, we can ensure that everyone has physical distancing, mask yourself, disinfect materials, hand hygiene, hand washing, and prevent overcrowding. I know the government has allowed more than 250 people in a particular place, but please, I think we should all avoid that. It is not being obsessive, compulsive, or uh, you know, having anxiety, but it is simple signs that has showed us. And please mask yourselves. We must ensure that we need to look after each other and businesses on a on a on a on a more bigger scale on a socially. Perhaps we should say that businesses should comply with the new norms. I go out, I see many businesses that do not comply with the new norm. And remember, we should vaccinate ourselves. Make sure the office gets everyone vaccinated and the public should encourage people to get vaccinated once the vaccine is out. Set up COVID-19 resource centers. We should have WhatsApp groups with professionals leading the discussion and queries to answer queries about COVID and also on mental health issues. We must show compassion and do positive things to make ourselves happy. Communication between employer and staff. And we should also take a special look at foreign workers and foreign laborers and make sure that their housing needs are addressed and there's no overcrowding. We must all understand that mental health can affect anyone. And I have been pushing for this to get our mental health assessed yearly. You know how our SOXO and Perteso, they keep having um, uh, yearly uh, health screening. I've kept uh, pursuing that we should actually ask them to um, continue uh, and go ahead further by having mental health status assessments. Remember, we have people like befrienders. Some people do not want to get professional help from some reason or another for this for the fear of stigmatization maybe you can actually talk to befrienders and befrienders are people who, they are not professionals they won't give you professional advice but they are friends who will listen and remember like how whatever is happening in italy please do not discriminate against covid-19 patients and do not discriminate against patients with mental health all right it's very important basically the power is in our hands so wash it people this is another slide on coping with stress <clears throat> during the COVID-19 situation. It's a bit lengthy. Uh, outbreaks, people at high risk. Uh, you can perhaps screenshot and look at this entire list on how to cope stress, to cope with stress during the COVID-19 situation. So yeah, that was in the present. Now, where is the future? Where are we on on this future? If you had noticed during our lockdown uh, in 
In fact, in those people with knockdown, how are they connected with the rest of the world is because of the internet. You and I are connecting right now because of the internet. But that also has repercussions. Now, in 2017 and 2018, when they actually found, um, uh, uh, they, they did a survey, they found that in Southeast Asia, Malaysia had the highest, third highest number of internet users at 75%. And I can assure you, it has become more. Look at our social media usage, especially on Facebook. It has become more and more. And as I understand, we are also now broadcasting from Facebook. So I can assure you that this number has actually gone up. But what does what comes with that? What happens with going online too long? And that is where we are headed in the future for mental health disorders due to cyberbullying. So in, uh, in a, I think it was in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, uh, BBC had actually come up and actually uh, done a small survey and said that social media harms moral development according to parents. Now, some of the questions the parents were asked, some negative traits which they saw online, they saw 60% anger and hostility towards their children. 51% of them felt they were ignored. Oh, sorry, uh, they were arrogant. Sorry, I'm, my mistake. They, there was arrogance showed or displayed or received by their children. 43% of them were ignored. 41% had bad judgment, posting something which they shouldn't have been posting. Or, uh, you know, that includes uh, tagging where they are, they are at their current location, which led to other issues. 36% actually commented on hatred and 30% of vanity. So what were they actually feeling that was lacking online? 24% said there was too little forgiveness and self-control. 21% said there was too little honesty. 20% said there was there was fairness. And 18% said humility was what were, were, be, were, lack, were lacking. Now, bullying in the UK, also another study done, and they found that 40% received nasty profile comments, 62% were sent nasty private messages via smartphone app, vulnerable, disbelieved, and knocked down self-esteem were some of the things which they faced. Now, this was in 2018. Can you imagine the situation right now? What are the type of cyberbullying and how does it affect uh, people mentally? Impersonation, I, I can show you, you see a lot of fake news, fake accounts. Harassment, calling people names, especially children online. Sometimes I feel very bad because some of them, when they just post something, you find that many people come there and attack them, even certain politicians. Trickery, as you can know, the number of people who are, uh, you know, con these days, cyber scams going up, that's also a form of cyberbullying. Social exclusion, they, they, they disregard their comments, they disregard them, they are isolated online, not physically, but online they are isolated. Cyber stalking, as long as they post, they come and they flame them. They just wait for them to post something and they go ahead and uh, 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 speak or type, rather type or ridicule them, which is actually quite rather a, a very serious situation. Looking at this particular slide, as you can see, these are cyber bullying statistics. And these are the percentage of parents that felt that their children were cyber bullied. And as you can see, Malaysia felt number six on the list with 23%. Now, this is in 2018. I can assure you that the stats has changed and perhaps we have gone up. As you can see, Japan is rather low, even with good internet access. Why? It is because of culture. So it is important that parents speak to their children and talk to them about cyberbullying, not only how to deal with cyberbullies, but also not to be a cyberbully. I always believe there's two sides to the point. So with all, all this COVID virus and, you know, uh, with, with, with cyberbullying, how do I assess and what do I do? Well, I always believe that one can actually always look at the depression, anxiety and stress scale, the DAS-21 where there is an English version and BM version. It is a scale which you can complain in about 15 minutes. And uh, it's rather simple questions. Uh, it, it does not require you to type anything. It is just a selection. And at the end, you actually get um, a, a result, whether you are facing depression, anxiety, and stress separately. Depression, anxiety, and stress. And I always suggest, and this is what I'm actually uh, um, uh, advocating to uh, the Ministry of Human Resource and even uh, uh, companies 
to actually do this assessment yearly for their particular staff because it is a good screening tool. And if there are signs of depression, anxiety, and stress, I always recommend them to actually get uh, professional help, uh, to seek professional help for a proper assessment. You may not be having depression, anxiety, and stress, but at least you get a proper assessment done. So what do we do to help with your current condition? So there are a couple of things which we can actually do. The most important is family help, family help and support, and also social support. Extremely vital. When I say family and social support, a lot of people think that it's only their family members. Hey, what if I don't have supportive family members? Hey, what if I don't have siblings or people who I can talk to? No, social support is there. You have befrienders, you can have friends. Maybe there are some friends who you're closer to than your family members. Maybe you can talk to them. They, that will definitely help. We have to stop the stigma against people with mental health disorders, people with COVID-19. We have to stop stigma, all right, even when we are online. We must recognize that anyone can end up with a mental illness. Even, even me, even you, anybody can end up with a mental health illness like a cough and cold. It is treatable, but the most important thing is get help, get help, and get help. And you should get help as soon as possible. So, okay, if you have a mental disorder or, okay, if let's say you don't have a mental disorder, mental illness, so what do I do? How do I move from here? Well, like a famous person said, can I advise you something? The most important thing is to learn to value yourself. Remember, I was always told, you can't scold a fish for not being able to climb a tree. You mustn't scold a fish for not being able to climb a tree. A fish was meant to swim in the sea or swim in water and likewise you can't say you can't scold a monkey for not being able to swim because the monkey is due to climb trees we all have our own journeys so learn to value yourself remember everybody was made for a purpose so find that purpose value it yourself god is very fair in that aspect take care of your physical health remember your mental health affects your physical health and your physical health affects your mental health let me give you an example I noticed that a lot of patients who are diabetics who have to be started on insulin go through some amount of depression. They feel that their condition is so is very bad or in a, such an advanced state that medications can't help them. So it is a high index of suspicion that we need to help them, especially with their physical health. For example, I know that I understand a lot of dental students, especially when you have a third molar extraction. We have done research where we found that patients who come with third molar extraction because of the pain that they face were already undergoing some amount of depression what can we do so we actually found finally that preemptive analgesia reduces their pain post-operatively and they have lower incidence of pain and lower incidences of depression something very important to think about but most importantly get regular health checkups make sure that you love your heart eat right exercise well all important things get good social support and family support. You may not have family support or social support, but at least have one, have good friends who you can trust, talk to, let out your problems. And remember, it is not all about giving, it's also about receiving. Maybe they may have a problem, always be there for them as well. Uh, a lot of them decide to go into um, uh, support groups, support groups where they sit and they talk about their issues, especially, I I find it very, uh, very good for addiction problems because a person may be addicted. For example, I have I have patients who are addicted to smoking or addicted to coffee. Not everybody is addicted to coffee. Maybe smoking, yeah. There may be more people, but addicted to coffee, you may have num number of it may be a, a a smaller number of group of people. So talking to another person with the same problem actually helps. Now that is also that also falls under social support. Relax your mind. Learn how to do things which makes you happy. Well, for me, uh, working is a sort of relaxation for me. Don't ask me why. That's my problem. Um, you know, doing epidemiology statistics, that makes me happy. That Relax your mind. For you, it may be reading a book, watching TV, sports, doing nothing. That's also relaxing your mind. Listening to music or sleeping. That's fine. 
But as long as you know the things that can help you relax your mind, that is most important. Do voluntary work. Helping others, helping others actually helps with uh, your mental health as well. Knowing that you're doing something for humanity and mankind, that also helps. Uh, it has an effect on, ox uh, on uh, endorphins and serotonin release, which makes you happier. Please do not indulge in substance abuse. I'm talking about alcohol, intravenous drug use, illicit social uh, drugs, smoking, and even marijuana. Um, there is no proof about medical marijuana at the moment. Please do not indulge yourself saying that you're treating yourself and always get help if you're having any sort of substance abuse. Remember, substance abuse starts small and later it grows bigger into a problem and it will definitely affect your mental health. Learn how to deal with stress. Push stress aside. And that comes with relaxing your mind. Learn how to deal with stress. Learn what causes your stress. And I always say the best is avoidance of stress or management of stress. Sometimes you can't avoid it. Like if you go to work and you get a lot of work, that's stressful. You can't be saying, oh, I'm not going to work, they, which, which happens quite a bit. A lot of people come for medical uh, sick leave because they can't deal with the stress. That's not the way. You have to learn how to handle the stress. Like, for example, when they found that the doctors were overworked in certain departments, they had the lean healthcare system where they only see a certain number of patients a day and they spread out their patients uh, better and they got more people to work in the department. That is way of coping. Be realistic with your goals. You know, sometimes even I am um, guilty of doing this. I want to do so many things in a day. You know, it's Sunday. I'm going to give a talk. I'm going to end up doing my work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. At the end of the day, I only do maybe 50% of it. It's good to set goals, but I think you should set realistic goals. Sometimes you just have to say, you know, I, this is the best I can do these days. I remember many uh, years ago listening to a senior doctor telling me a story when he said that, you know, in those days, there were people, uh, surgeons, who would like to do 10, 15 cases a day, as many as they can. But there were very senior doctors, very senior surgeons, who only wanted to do five to six a day because they knew that their best work can only come from them. So I think very, being realistic with their goals is being realistic with goals is important. It may be a problem where key performance index or KPIs are a concern, but that again comes with managing your stress well. Monetary, uh, monetary, break the monotony. Break the monotony. Every day, go to work, come back, sleep, wake up. Go to work, come back, sleep, wake up. That's monotony. Doing the same thing every day. Break the monotony. Sometimes, maybe, you know, uh, decide to do something after work. Rest, relax your mind. Break the monotony. Monotonicity actually causes mental health issues. But the most important thing, my friends, is to know that you are having and recognize an issue, get help. Remember, there are many senior people around, there are many friends, families, there are people like befrienders around, there are people like me who I get a lot of messages on Twitter, especially during the lockdown period where people had mental health issues or they felt they had mental health issues, they needed to talk to a professional. There are many of them had messaged me, I've spoken to them, referred them to colleagues, and uh, God willing and thankfully, they are much better now. But learn to recognize that the, 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 the thing with treatment is not only to get help early, is to recognize that you have a problem. The moment you recognize you have a problem, the next thing will be to seek treatment. Once you break these two biggest barriers, which is the, unfortunately the start of the condition to your, uh, the start of where you want to get better, these are the two biggest hurdles you will face and then you will feel better later on. These are the two biggest hurdles you must overcome. So I have a list of my friends in Befrienders. Uh, this is a list uh, you can even contact them on skype you may want to screenshot this particular um uh, slide and even if you need to talk to them you can actually talk to them what's whatsapp to them speak to them they won't give you medical advice but they may refer you to people with medical knowledge or, or medical abilities professional help at least there's someone you can speak to. i would like to acknowledge befrienders for helping me to share their services for the cyberbullying slides, I would like to thank my colleagues, Dr. Kavita and Dr. Farah. And all portals link the intellectual properties and content belongs to them. With that, thank you.
Thank you so much, Dr. Arvinder. It was a long talk. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it was a very, very uh, interesting and uh, informative talk. And I, I must say, you have really shown us some impressive statistics and uh, some uh, really uh, lots of information there. So uh, I think we are ready to open up the question and answers um, session. And uh, uh, um, I have, I, I thought I'll start off by asking you the first questions. So I just wanted to ask you, like uh, for doctors themselves, what could be the uh, yep. early indicators for personal, uh, you know, low time or a personal uh, on, on the personal front? What could be the early indicators that they're actually heading to uh, depression? Yeah. So the most important thing is uh, normally from what I see, the early indicators doesn't come from oneself; it's from someone who is observing. But this has become a problem because people um, mask themselves very well. Not only is a face mask now, now is even more difficult because you have a face mask on top. But, uh, you know, people mask their, 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 their emotions. Um, I think the most important thing is uh, I have friends, uh, doctors, um, some of the issues which they faced was, um, unfortunately, was to stop smoking. Some of them had a bad a, a habit of smoking and they wanted to get rid of it. Now, that actually caused mental issues. And their spouses actually got to know that they actually had an issue. They were perhaps uh, snapping early. Um, some of them were getting angry for no reason. So there may be a habitual change. And uh, it may not come as directly somebody saying that you have a problem, but they may actually comment, hey, you know what? Uh, uh, or for example, uh, Arvinda, you know, uh, these days, I notice that you're getting angry faster. Or Arvinda, you know, these days, I notice that uh, you like to isolate yourself more than what you used to. So these are early signs. Like I said, the two, bigger barri the two biggest barriers are, first of all, identifying that there's a problem. And number two is getting help. So I think the biggest hurdle among these two is identifying that there's a problem. So... Sometimes it is difficult to identify the problem. Thus, I always recommend go for the DAS scale, uh, DASS21. Uh, do the evaluation yourself. And you may find something which you didn't, didn't think was a problem. Of course, get, get a professional assessment. But, you know, it is very difficult because of our culture. Uh, you know, uh, mental health is still a stigma. Or people refuse to say something because they don't want to hurt another person. So it is best to take a self-assessment. Thus, my uh, advoc uh, my advocation to tell the Ministry of Human Resource to make sure that a mental health assessment is at least done yearly. In fact, uh, uh, I'm very happy that some companies who have uh, uh, engaged in my talks have decided to do it on a six-monthly basis, which I thought was pretty good. Okay. So that that's a very interesting uh, uh, take to that. So, uh, Dr. Fawaz? Yeah, I, I totally agree with Dr. Lari that... Um, a very nice presentation and as uh, thank you they say in epidemiology numbers never lie mm. so we do really have an issue <laughs> they, they can on occasion but uh, it depends on who reports it <laughs> <laughs> but i also would like to share in fact um, i did a study on uh, the mental health status of uh, dental students in all of malaysia and uh, my study came up with the prevalence of depression as high as uh, 35%. And out of which uh, oh, 1% were having extremely high um, depression. So it is MDD. out there. The problem is pretty much out there. And like uh, Dr. Arvinda said, I totally agree. You have to value yourself. And to realize your value, you must be surrounded by people who value you. So basically, true friends are what is required. And uh, uh, Dr. Arvind, I want to ask you that uh, everybody in everyday life is tested mentally by a lot of rude people, a lot of difficult situations. Some people bounce back and some people are not able to bounce back. All right. Yeah. So what would be those risk factors for people who could not bounce back? So, you know, can have, say, for me, uh, some days I come across a very rude person, but you know, after a few minutes, I'm all right. But sometimes, you know, some people cannot come back to normal and they linger on. So, what would be your advice to that situation, or maybe that risk factors of people who cannot bounce back to normality? 
after they are mentally tested or challenged by something thank you for the question dr fawaz actually the most important thing is to get help so i always believe um that people who, who can't bounce back there may be a hindrance to that why can't they bounce back is it happening occasionally uh, uh, sorry more it has become more frequent these days for example taking that problem web people are more rude to them they can't get a lot done over that day um and because of their current condition this uh dominoes effect over the next day the work builds up people more people come and shout at them which is something very common which i see daily and um, the most important thing is like i said is number one to identify that there is a problem get help and also i think that uh how do a person does a person bounce back is like what you said if love yourself make sure and know that everybody is ha- have their own purpose and number 2 is to do relaxing things of the mind i know of colleagues who have actually undergone depression uh just by being a friend to them just by talking to them uh telling them and highlighting how good they were in the past before they actually had the problem i feel that's actually a very good thing because the moment uh, i always like that is why i always tell people to keep record of their work um if you follow my twitter if you follow my linkedin I post a lot of things um, regularly, especially uh, something which I've done uh, on a, on a, on an academic or professional basis. I put it there, and sometimes when I feel sad, I just go and look. Hey, you know what? What? Not bad. I've done a lot of things actually in the past. Now your own personal record, you know, people may not be there to share with you. They may not know what you have done, but you have your own personal record, and then you go and say, "Oh, not bad. I've actually done quite a bit." You know, in your case where people are rude to you, um, I always tell my uh, Uh, hospital staff or healthcare professional staff always keep this thank you notes which uh, patients give to you um it may not be much to you uh you know e- you may have a abundant amount of it but uh, at our practice where i i currently help out uh, even in the clinic kasiyatans and also in private practice um we tend to keep all these little mementos in one particular board not only for the patients to see but it is at a place where we pass most common you know you have up and down days and when we look at it we like wow oh, i remember this guy and you know that actually brings the mood back up and that is where you get the endorphins and your uh, serotonin some people indulge in eating chocolates you know you know uh, very interesting some people when they're sad especially ladies they love eating chocolates i i don't know whether uh, you notice or even men for that matter i don't think uh, i should be stigmatizing and saying ladies alone even i see men who eat a lot of chocolates why because they're upset the reason is because it relieves endorphins and glucose but unfortunately with this particular non pharmacological therapy there is a big uh, ugly side of diabetes waiting to happen so um i prefer that if you can do something which is not eating related um do something which is relaxing your mind and bring back happy moments do positive things yeah absolutely i agree i think your idea of putting your mementos and thank you notes in one corner of your uh, office or a house where you no know, keeps reminding you yep. of the good times i think it's a very good advice that uh, we all must take thank you so much uh, uh, i had uh, i had uh, i had i had uh, uh, professor i had professors uh, lecturers in the past who used to keep all the thank you cards the students gave them especially in their birthdays and on other occasions when they graduated um one guy had so many photographs of all, all the students who graduated he insisted of taking picture with most of the students his mentees uh, when they graduated and you know when they had any problem with a particular batch or with any student or with even for other colleagues for that matters they look at these particular pictures and it brings back happy memories and they say you know what i did that you know i i i i i may not be the reason but i'm definitely part of the reason but and that brings back good memories and you know next day they're back to normal they're back to normal so what really what uh, triggers that happiness in you absolutely 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 yeah. Yeah. dr lari yeah we have a question here for you from uh, our uh, dean dr ajay asking that uh, what yeah. your thoughts are on how the pandemic is affecting mental health of children and young adults oh Thanks, Dr. Ajit. I think that is a brilliant 
question uh, with many possible answers, but I think it is going downhill. Um, uh, the reason why we are seeing a lot of mental health issues among children these days is because, especially, and it's going to happen much more. You can mark my words, you can, you can record it down, you can record this video and keep it over the years. We are going to see more and more mental health issues among children and young adults. Remember, 50% of them develop uh, issues by, their, by the age of 14. With our current lockdown, we are actually doing more things online. We are meeting now online. I'm sure your students are perhaps on uh, classes, not practicals, but classes. They are doing it online. And there is a more, uh, there is a susceptibility of people who are not exposed much online, especially students and uh, younger, younger children, who are going to have much more online experiences. My kids, uh, they were not exposed much to the internet, not exposed much to uh, 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 content on the internet. Now, because of their school going online, now they're exposed to that. So with that, slowly, you will find that uh, social media will become an issue, that these people are indulged more on social media. I am very sure most of the participants who are looking here today have one eye on this talk and another eye on some social media, Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. There is definitely, it is a norm. I don't blame them. It is becoming our norm. Now, with that... Cyberbullying comes up. That is why I decided to talk on cyberbullying because I believe that cyberbullying is going to be a thing of the future which is going to cause depression, anxiety, and stress. Thus, the DAS skill, I feel, is very important. And I think that this pandemic is definitely going to affect us uh, or has already affected us with, with depression, anxiety, and stress, obsessive compulsive disorders, um, and uh, maybe uh, some amount of... Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder for those people who have got COVID-19, but definitely in children and young adults, it is going to leave a mental scar. I remember reading about the 1911, uh, uh, in 1911, um, about the, the, the Spanish flu, if I'm not mistaken, and how it has left people, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, uh, with, with after the bombings, it has affected people mentally, not only physically, but mentally. It has scarred them for life. The, the, the Holocaust has scarred them for life. I feel this COVID-19 situation of staying at home um, and those of them who are suffering from uh, uh, domestic abuse, not only women, but also children. Um, unfortunately, it is definitely going to show in the near future on this current pandemic as what happened. So I hope I answered your question, Dr. Ajay. So, yeah. So, um <clears throat> I, I have another question uh, for you. Another... Sorry, can I just Sorry. show a slide before we go to the, the oh, question? Oh, yes. Um, I, I would... Am I on screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I would just like to go back to this particular chart. Uh, do you all see this chart? Am I uh, sharing screen? No, 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 you're not sharing screen. Okay, so what? Sorry, one moment. Eh? So I will just share my screen. Yep, that's right. So, uh, sorry, this was the particular uh, R not which I was telling you uh, yes. about. And I honestly, ex I, I honestly think, uh, uh, Doctor Ajay, that our mental health is following this trend and perhaps much higher, and maybe even of this manner. In fact, after this, I think it will be somewhere here because of the backlog cases. Now, this is what I'm talking about in reality, because it is not only affecting the COVID-19 people, it's going to affect those people who are susceptible to COVID-19, which is everyone. So there will be, I think, an increase in mental health issues. But whether we are, whether we are uh, ready to recognize it, whether we are ready to uh, accept it, whether we are ready to diagnose it is another story altogether. Yes, true. Um, I, I have Sorry, another, you had question. another question. Yes, on a, on a lighter note, I just wanted to ask you: Why is it that your the the photographs that you showed us had all famous celebrities and no politicians? Why do we think that the politicians, of, why are politicians, uh, you know, having a better state of mental health? Oh, I think that they may be having issues. But uh, maybe they may not, uh, it has not come out in public note 
because it will definitely affect their reputation. Um, how, do, how do I put this? <laughs> okay, um, you know how uh, there is, uh, how, how uh, public figures are not allowed to smoke in public. But are you trying to say that politicians and celebrities do not smoke? No, they definitely are. But the, the thing is whether they are coming out to recognize it. That is why I like Dr. Aline, uh, um, Dr. Aline Khan, uh, uh, Rosina Aline Khan, who has actually brought up this very issue which you have mentioned. Uh, they may be having some issues. I'm sorry to say, I, uh, I, I also think that Donald Trump may be having some bipolar disorder. Honestly, from the way he acts, the way he does his um, uh, decisions, and his sheer ability to disregard for face masking until he was forced to wear a face mask. I don't know whether you know this story. He actually went into a, 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 a mask into a mask factory for the day and everything was sterile. He refused to wear a mask and they had to discard every single face mask which was produced that day because he refused to wear a face mask into that facility. And they had to throw everything away. So can you imagine the PPEs for the day was actually gone? So... I honestly feel that there are many uh, uh, people out there who, and these people may fall under the undiagnosed or silently diagnosed. They may be getting treatment and I hope they're honestly getting treatment. But um, I think it affects everyone. Unfortunately, at this moment, we don't have many celebrities who have come out. I think there was one uh, Cuban or Colombian Prime Minister or President who has come up and said that they had in the past. Football, we have seen slowly, we are seeing players who are coming out and saying that they have mental uh, disorders. Uh, I think it needs that one person to come up and say that they had an issue and slowly it will take leap. Others will definitely follow suit. Yes, you're right about that. So, um, we have one more question from um, uh, a viewer here, uh, Ms. Vivian Verghese asking how do we identify depressed individuals around us oh very good question like i said everybody not only wears a face mask they wear a mask on top of their face mask these days and mm -hmm. uh, very sad people appear very happy i would like to put out the best example jim carrey i never knew that he actually had that bad depression i knew he had depressive disorders you know russell peters he's also dealing with depression Unfortunately, but uh, I think this was more of relationship disorder, uh, relationship issues and also because of hypothyroidism. But um, to be very frank, uh, it is actually quite difficult. It is a high index of suspicion. In fact, when uh, I am at clinic, I get a lot of patients who come with me with chronic pain. They just come. Today is headache. It's a headache. Tomorrow is a shoulder pain. Day after tomorrow is a back pain. Uh, next day is a, is a foot pain. But actually, when you sit and ask them, they're actually having depressive disorder. And you will not believe how many patients I have detected with domestic abuse because of They come with all sorts of uh, pains, issues, not because of anything, but simply because, uh, you know, they had they, 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 they have this, this, this uh, particular pains, maybe due to trauma or not due to trauma, but it was more of a mental health issue. So it's a high index suspicion of level. It is easier if you know that person, uh, but some of the things which is test textbook, um, suddenly developing low mood. They all the while they are very hyped, they are happy people. Suddenly they are at low moods. They refuse to eat. Early morning awakening, and they don't find uh, pleasure in things which they used to be happy doing. About some people used to love going up. Now they refuse to go out. They don't want to go out. That also is another sign. So it's not easy, but I think. A high index of suspicion and um, awareness is what is what is needed. Yes. Right. Uh, I, I think that's uh, all the questions we have for now. Dr. Fawaz, would you like to give us a, a, a last note on that? Uh, your final... Yes. So I would really like to thank Dr. Arvind for taking out time to speak to us thank on you. a very, very important issue. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to actually uh, thank all the students who participated in my study on mental health. Thank you guys so much. Because of you, we have some data and we are discussing this topic with Dr. Arvind. And uh, for the viewers, uh, uh, finally, thank you, Dr. Arvind Singh, for uh, coming over, talking to us.
thank you actually just one note uh, for vivian you can actually use the dust scale the depression anxiety stress scale just uh, casually pass it on to someone say that uh, you know um, there's a survey going on it's a own personal survey uh, you will only get to know the results nobody will know about it maybe you know you just post it in a group of friends ask them to take it with that particular person inside that may help yeah. we will try and share Self those links on our page also we we will try and share those links here on our page and we will also request sure. everyone to please give us feedback and uh, we will post your certificates we'll email them to you uh, once again uh, thank you so much dr arvinder it was uh, a wonderful talk it has really opened up uh, uh, so many uh, you know uh, areas that we did not know and uh, we're now um, a not a lot more uh, knowledgeable and uh, thank you very much for obliging to talk, take your time and talk to us we understand you're a very busy doctor right and i think most uh, welcome thank, thank you dr lady and dr boss thank you all right everyone thank you thank you guys all right take care bye bye all right bye bye all right